Well, 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 here we finally are, ladies and jellyfish. Welcome back, as always, to Ask Air, and to the final part of this four-part series, ranking all the Ben 10 aliens show by show. Today, it's time to look at the 17 Omniverse aliens from Shock Squash to Vampire, and rank them all from worst to best. Let's start at the bottom of the barrel. By far the worst Benton alien ever, Waka Trout. Who in the hell came up with this alien? Did they literally sit down and think, hey, we need something worse than Arctiguana. Let's just take a blue fish and give him absolutely no powers. He'll be short and fat with little T-Rex arms, so he definitely can't fight. And you know what? We'll just make him a running gag for Ben to transform into when he doesn't want him, because that's not an old joke we've done since literally the first episode. Well, I don't want a running gag, and I'm pretty sure most fans don't either. And if he's gonna be a running gag, like Wrath for example, at least make him funny or cool. This one totally takes the bottom spot by a wide margin. <laughs> Yeah, another one of Omniverse's throwaway aliens that achieves absolutely nothing cool. This is the kind of alien that bootleg YouTubers would have drawn in those cringy merge videos from 2014. Or the kind of alien you'd pretend to be part of Ben's playlist when you have a random action figure you want to incorporate into your playing. As an alien, Mustache really has nothing going for him. I mean, his mustache is strong, and it can twirl around and make him fly, but can he actually do anything else? I just wish we had a scene where a Vaxasaurian just steps on this guy like it's a game of whack-a-mole stash. I know there's some obscure love out there in some circles for Kick and Hawk, but I just don't buy it. His whole concept is so foreign to Ben 10, and it feels really out of the blue when he transforms. They definitely just wanted to add this one so they could say they had a chicken alien, and milk him for a few puns, but past that, there's really nothing to this alien. He's supposed to be Ben's best hand-to-hand -hand fighter, but who really cares about that? It's ain't Street Fighter. Ben can use other abilities to kick ass. He doesn't need Kick and Hawk any more than he needs Molestash, and that's why it's so low on this list for me. I have a personal hatred for Ball Weevil, and if I was a bit more biased, it would definitely be at the bottom of this list. But I have to be fair to this one, because unlike a lot of Omniverse's worst aliens, this one actually has powers. But I just hate aliens that degrade the identity of Ben 10. This isn't Pokemon. We don't need aliens that look like this. His name makes no sense, his design is mediocre at best, and his voice is just grating to listen to. My main gripe is the complete overuse of this one throughout Omniverse. I know he didn't have an insane amount of appearances, but he was in a lot of important episodes, and took up time that frankly much better aliens could have taken. Screw Ball Weevil. I enjoyed Bullfrag for about one episode before the joke faded away into something unfunny. Yes, as a foil to Atea, and especially in the Frogs of War special, Bullfrag was awesome. His design was funny and interesting, and his voice added a deeper layer to it all. But past that, Bullfrag was used as another throwaway alien that doesn't really have any abilities. The only reason he's higher than Bullweevil is his glasses. I like him a lot. Pesky Dust is an interesting one for sure. I know this one is supposed to be like a Pokemon thing, but I like him much more than Bell Weevil. Him, right? I swear, he's the only alien that I can't tell whether it's a man or a woman, even though all of Ben's aliens are obviously dudes. Anyway, the name is much better, the design isn't half bad, and the powers are much cooler. I personally always laugh when he haunts Charles Zenith's nightmares, and it's just interesting that we've never had a dream alien before this one. I guess Amphibian sort of could have done this, but they never explored that sadly. The main issue with Pesky Dust is his voice, unfortunately. It's really hard to understand the words, and Omniverse just went too far sometimes times in this realm. They were tasked with adding even more unique voices after the hundreds of characters from the other three shows, and they took some risks for sure. This is just a bad one in my eyes. I don't see the hate for this one, to be honest. I think among all the small Omniverse aliens, the worst is certainly the funniest and most creative among them. The design is just fine. I mean, you guys know how I feel about the underpants, but the yellow fat body actually fits perfectly for this alien in my eyes. The fact that he's indestructible but still feels pain is absolutely hilarious, and I wish he was used in more practical applications throughout the show. Yeah, see? When you actually make me laugh, makes up for your crappy aliens. Crash Hopper! Pretty good wordplay on the name there, and a pretty decent design on this one. Crash Hopper was one of the OG Omniverse aliens from the first season, and I never had a problem with them. I mean, there's plenty of better aliens, but he was a pretty well-needed alien when it came to hopping long distances and headbutting crap. I guess the closest thing we had to that before was forearms, but never really in this way. The sound effect it makes when he jumps is funny too, but I never really felt attached to this alien personally. Moving on. Ugh, the fart alien? Nah, but seriously though, I've done got rot a bit dirty in the past. He's actually a really cool alien with awesome abilities. His design is cool and looks really good. The colors all fit the alien, and the gaseous chamber fits the idea they were looking for. It just feels a bit uninspired in my opinion. Like this design is definitely something I would have come up with if they pitched me a gas alien. Maybe a more creative team would have made him a ball of gas, and he swirls around to create different concoctions, or I don't know, something. But yeah, his abilities are still awesome. He can make tear gas, laughing gas, knockout gas, and acid. That's just the ones we saw on screen. I'm gonna just say one thing though, if this alien was from Ultimate Alien, they would have done a lot better job with him. Sort of like how Water Hazard removed the moisture from the air instead of just shooting water balls, you know? There are definitely more possibilities to this one, but sadly we only saw the basics. 
Wampire is cool as hell. The design looks absolutely stellar. As far as the powers go, this one doesn't hold back. He can mind control others, drain them of their energy, and fly while he does it, even turning into a bat-like version of himself at times. The big weakness is Sunlight though, which I think is pretty funny and fitting for this guy. I really think this one was underrated. The name is cool, and the Romanian accent is a nice touch too. Ooh, the scary alien. Not gonna lie, I needed way more of this alien to even remember its existence. But it's another one of those aliens that they say is super powerful, but really wasn't even shown more than a few times. I think an alien that is so scary can theoretically defeat celestial sapiens is funny as hell, and the design for this one is actually kinda nice. It low-key makes me imagine what an ultimate the worst would look like. I mean seriously, can you imagine an ultimate the worst? If Topic got a bit more time to shine, maybe I'd put him a little higher. But as it is, just a bit overhyped in my eyes. Much like Topic, Atomics was overhyped as hell and totally didn't deserve all the hype he was given. These guys tried to convince us that he's equal to Alien X level power. I mean, come on! You can't just say an alien is powerful but only give us a handful of appearances. That's how you lose credibility in my eyes. And Atomics is the opposite of authentic as an alien. His voice is super annoying and obnoxious, and his design looks like something out of Tekken headquarters. However, while this alien was certainly overhyped and all that, his powers are still pretty cool. I love anything having to do with nuclear blasts, and the fact that he yells out his signature moves like Wrath and Echo Echo was always cool to me. Lego Gorilla! I know a lot of people find Blocks infuriating and then he deserves the bottom spot on every single list or whatever, but I actually find him to be a super practical alien in combat. Yeah, he was obviously like, cashing for the popularity of Lego at the time, but hey, so it was a Lego movie. Now I don't hear anyone hate on that. Blocks comes in handy on making walls, containing bombs, creating long chains, and basically being able to make any structure he feels like in a fight. His design and especially his voice are also badass, and adds a lot to this alien's overall stature. I just find it hard to believe there's a whole planet full of Lego Gorillas. One of these and it's game over for this guy. Astrodactyl is actually one of my favorite aliens. I know, Jet Ray with whips, big deal, but the way this alien came together in the end is truly beautiful. The design is very human, giving him all he needs in a red and yellow package that looks awesome. His powers are also badass. He gets the jetpack, he can fly, he can quickly open his wings up like one of those old Batman toys, and he can propel himself up super quick. He has energy whips, and he can even shoot energy out of his mouth, and do these cool propulsion blasts. Overall, a fantastic alien that encapsulates everything I loved about Jet Ray, stitches some of the lame aspects I didn't like, while adding some cool new things too. I know this one was introduced in Heroes United, but it's still an Omniverse alien. I mean, come on. Shock Squatch's Omniverse design is among my favorites in the whole show, and a thousand percent an improvement over the original. Electricity aliens are a dime a dozen in Ben 10, but this one takes a lot of aspects and merges them together in a nice package. He usually electrifies the ground, or sort of hugs the dude and electrocutes him that way. He's a super menacing sort of alien and comes off as more serious than a lot of the previous aliens. His Canadian A's are also pretty funny to me as a Canadian. Feedback was Omni vs. Swampfire for sure. It was given the most time to be fleshed out and overhyped in a lot of aspects. Another electricity alien, Feedback becomes the go-to alien for anything electric related. Even though there's Buzz Shock, Chroma Stone, Shock Squatch, Amphibian, and Frankenstrike, Feedback quickly becomes known as the main contender among these aliens. This is absolutely assisted by his killer voice and his killer design. He just comes off as badass in every way, and all the flashbacks we got in regard to his death and his reincarnation were awesome. What is he, Jesus? <laughs> My favorite Omniverse alien, despite all the theatrics and feedback, is absolutely Gravitac. Gravitac is a giant bouldering planet who can manipulate gravity, fly, create black holes, create force fields, and so much more. He can turn himself into a planet and orbit crap around him, and even survive in space. I love how they made him a really patient alien in that one episode, and his voice definitely fits that wholesome vibe. His design just makes me drool because it was done so well. I'll probably make a video in the future comparing him to Lodestar, but spoiler alert, he's much cooler in every aspect. Gravitac rules, man. And that was the Ben 10 Omniverse roster red. What do you think? Which alien won this battle for you? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below, and please like and subscribe if you did enjoy to support me. Up next, all the aliens ranked. That's right boys, all of them. See you in the next one.